First story this hour takes us to Pakistan, where five people have been killed in a U.S. drone attack in northwestern part of that country. Our local officials have told Press TV that four people died when an American assassination drone fired missiles into a vehicle in North Waziristan tribal area. A second strike on a building left another person dead. Now the incident comes at a time of heightened tensions between Washington and Islamabad over U.S.-led attack on Pakistani soil back in November. That raid left 24 Pakistani soldiers dead and prompted Islamabad to shut down a U.S. base used to service assassination drones. Washington says its unmanned aircraft target militants. However, reports show many victims of such attacks have been civilians. Switching over to Islamabad, we're joined by defense and diplomacy analyst, Mr. Navid Ahmed. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, uh, there was a time after the uh, 24 Pakistanis were killed, there was a lull in the drone attacks. But uh, over the last few weeks, we have seen once again that the attacks seem to be back on target, no pun intended. Um, what is, uh, do you think, that what can be done or what can be done from Islamabad's perspective in order to stop these drone attacks? First of all, these drone attacks are coming at a time when Pakistan is reviewing its U.S. policy and its relationship with NATO and other countries that are involved in Afghanistan. So for that matter, this timing is self-destructive for the United States and its own interest. Secondly, within Pakistan, political waves are very differently, uh, you know, headed to in a direction when Imran Khan who is not very fond of America and its policies of high-handedness across the world is riding a tsunami of public resistance and awakening which can be called Pakistani version of Arab Spring. Thirdly, all these drone attacks that we are seeing at this time are basically serving the domestic interests of for Mr. Obama and his regime back there in Washington uh, where an election is due and he, this is all in the run-up to uh, the discussions that are happening within the Republican camp about how to deal with countries like Pakistan, which are so-called trouble troublemakers and the worst allies to have. Now, uh, Mr. Ahmed, you said that it's a sensitive time in Washington, Islamabad relations. And if that's the case, if Washington is concerned or would be concerned about the relations and deteriorating, then why would they continue these drone attacks, especially at this time? As I told you, it's a domestic imperative of domestic politics and the United States and its leaders do not differentiate uh, between humanitarian uh, impact or, or human impact of such drone attacks which allegedly claim uh, some uh, so-called Al-Qaeda or uh, Taliban operatives which of course are present in some numbers there, though diminishing. Uh, but in Washington, in Virginia, in L uh, or Florida, from where all these things are operated, it doesn't make sense as to who is dying. Uh, U.S. Uh, drones are saving American pilots from the harm's way. And they are, uh, of course, uh, uh, that is what the media projects, are serving the U.S. interest of not only securing its military assets, but also killing those who might attack on the American mainland, which is such a far theory, it doesn't have, an, have any implications or existence for the past at least 10 years. Well, let's talk about the reaction uh, from uh, uh, inside of Pakistan itself. Um, how is this having an effect on uh, the Pakistani population in general? Because we know that there was a lot of uh, been protesting ever since uh, the 24 individuals were killed and even prior to that with the drone uh, attacks. What about now? Isn't this uh, having a negative effect overall on the uh, Pakistani people, how they view the United States and also how they view their own government relationship with Washington? Such drone attacks come at a time in Pakistan where uh, political government is engaged with a serious uh, duel with the Pakistani military establishment. In the case of a memo written by, allegedly by a Pakistani ambassador and sent through an American national to the American general back in May after Osama was killed. At that particular time, uh, when such things are happening, the government gets more discredited because it has failed to keep up with the UN uh, the uh, resolutions of the parliament that were passed twice. Uh, 
and all political parties and military agreed to it. Secondly, it also serves the interest of the opposition party, which is by far only one, and that is Tariq Insaf of Imran Khan. And thirdly, public anger at, at the grassroots is definitely increasing. There is no uh, question about Pakistan having the maximum percentage of people who do not like America. And people would not like to work with US in the manner uh, Gilani government have been working or Musharraf has been trying to work or the previous regimes of Benazir Bhutto or Nawaz Sharif have done. So there will be serious consequences and this time extremely long term. Well, for that, dear comments, uh, we appreciate you being with us. Defense and Diplomacy Analyst, Mr. Navid Ahmad.